Jesus, he said that I am the good shepherd. My sheep, they hear my voice and they follow me. One thing is certain about sheep is that sheep, they need for someone to watch over them. They are essentially helpless, defenseless creatures. And so when a predator comes upon them, sheep, they try to run, they try to scatter, but sheep, they aren't quick, they aren't fast animals. And again, they don't have a means to protect themselves. So sheep, if one thing is certainly true, sheep, they need a good shepherd. And so we will see this said in our Sunday school lesson for today. Our lesson opens with Jesus expressing that he is the door of the sheep and that those who came before him were thieves and robbers. Now, to be clear here, when we see Jesus speak about those that came before him, I want you to understand that he is not speaking about those that actually carried out the task that God had called them to do. Specifically in the Old Testament days, the prophets, they did exactly what God called them to do. Now, in the Old Testament times, we know that there were false prophets. And so here today we see that Jesus was talking about those false teachers, those false prophets. And we also see that he's even speaking about the religious leaders of his day as well. There are two specific events prior to what we're going over here in our lesson this week that led to Jesus speaking about being the door of the sheep with the first event being the religious leaders wanting Jesus to stone a woman who was caught in the act of adultery. As we saw in our lesson last week, Jesus said that he was the light of the world. And in being the light of the world, Jesus was saying that he was the one that reveals all that is the divine truth. And in that, we'll see the next event, it happened after Jesus had healed a man who was born blind on the Sabbath. And a man being healed on the Sabbath, it frustrated the religious leaders as they went and they confronted him and they asked him, how did you receive your sight? They weren't even happy. They weren't thrilled that the man who was born blind had received his sight. So when the man told them that it was Jesus that had healed him, they said to him, Jesus was not a man from God. So the blind man, he will see, essentially rebuke their charge against Jesus not being a man of God by stating that if Jesus was not from God, he could do nothing, especially not all of the good works that Jesus had been doing, all of the healing that Jesus had been doing, all of the teaching that Jesus had been doing. And so for this, the religious leaders, they acted as if they were the doorway to the Lord. They acted as if they were the doorway to heaven as they chose to kick the man out of the synagogue. So again, I ask you this week, who are we? to think or to actually believe that we have more authority than the Lord. Who are we to actually think that we can be the doorway to letting some folks into heaven and blocking others from getting into heaven? We simply don't have that power. We simply don't have that authority. We are not the final judge. We are not the final say as to who can go to heaven and who cannot go to heaven. So Jesus, he made it plain. Jesus, he made it simple by saying that again, he is the door of the sheep. Jesus, he ultimately is the judge. He ultimately determines who it is that shall be saved. Now the thief on the other hand, Jesus said, was one who came to steal, was one who came to kill, was one who came to destroy. So the false prophets we should remember Again, they led the people astray in both the northern and the southern kingdom of Israel. Those they led astray were conquered, they were destroyed by the Syrians and by the Babylonians. The religious leaders, had Jesus not come, were essentially doing the same thing at that point in time as scripture shows us how the temple had been made into a den of thieves. There are many who like to proclaim that they are shepherds over the Lord's flock. And again, if we really are, if we truly are watching over God's flock and we desire to be good shepherds over his flock, then we should be doing everything possible within our power, not to lead our flock that we are watching over, not to lead them astray, not to lead them away from the word of God. So Jesus said that he, again, is the good shepherd. Now, what makes him the good shepherd? What makes him the good shepherd is the fact that 
he gives his life for the sheep. Jesus, he sacrificed his life in the heavenly kingdom to come to our world to tend to his flock. We don't often take into consideration all that Jesus left behind in order to dwell with all of us, in order to come and to save us from sin. Jesus, he left his father's heavenly kingdom. So in other words, he left a place of peace. He left a place of happiness. He left a place of eternal joy to come and dwell among us, to dwell with mankind in a place that is what we say is filled with all sorts of wickedness and sin. Jesus, he left what was holy and righteous to dwell among sin. So Jesus, he gave up his life in heaven to come and dwell with us because the fact of the matter is that those who were like hired help, they were doing nothing to actually care for his flock. In the face of danger, the hired help, they left the flock to be torn apart by danger. Again, think about it. The false prophets, they led the people again to being destroyed by sin. And the religious leaders, they weren't doing anything any differently. If Jesus had not come again, the religious leaders of his day, they would have led the people, they would have led them astray, they would have led them to being destroyed. So again, if you are going to say that you are a shepherd over a portion of God's flock, then this better be true about you. You better love that flock that you're watching over and you better care for that flock that you are watching over. Israel was not the only flock that Jesus was concerned for in the 16th verse. One of my favorite verses that we find in scripture is where again it is confirmed for us that the Lord loved the world and that he gave his only begotten son for the world. Who were these other sheep that Jesus spoke of there in the 16th verse that were not of the fold of Israel? The other sheep, they were the Gentiles that would choose to believe and follow him. Let us remember again, the only begotten son was sent to save the world, not just one group of people. All of those who follow Christ will be, as Jesus said, will be one flock and they will be under his care. There's some who believe that God is only going to love you if you share the blood of Israel. However, what scripture shows us today is that's not true. Jew or Gentile, let us remember, the Lord sent his only begotten son to the world, to all people, because he loved the world. And because he loved the world, he gave us his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him, whosoever, that is whoever, all people believe in him will not perish, but have everlasting life. So in the 14th and in the 15th verse, our lesson, it begins to close us out on a note that we'll see repeat itself. That note being that Jesus, he loves all of us. And in his love for all of us, he is our good shepherd. And the good shepherd, Jesus again said, lays down his life for his sheep. Jesus, he offered up his life for us. And because he offered up his life for us, because he carried out the Father's will, Jesus said that the Father loves him. Because he became our propitiation, we have everlasting life under his care and under his grace. We live under grace. We live under the love of God today. The one thing that we learn in our lesson here this week is this. Spiritually speaking, we are all like sheep in this world that we live in. All of us who sincerely and genuinely believe in Christ and follow him, we are like sheep. We live in a world where we don't wrestle against the flesh and blood, as Paul said, but we wrestle against the rulers of darkness, principalities and spiritual powers that seek to scatter us, that seeks to tear us down in our soul, that seeks to destroy us in our soul. We know that our great adversary is not someone who's of the flesh, but is the devil. And again, those things that stand against us, spiritually speaking, we can't see those things. And as I learned, when you can't see something, you can't beat it, you can't defeat it. And so the one thing that is good for us is that we have a good shepherd that watches over us, that keeps us in his care, that shields and protects us, that gives his life 
for us. We have the Good Shepherd of the 23rd Psalm that leads us beside the still waters, that leads us out into his pastures. And in the presence of our enemies, our Good Shepherd, he greatly blesses us. So let us be thankful let us be grateful let us be appreciative of our good shepherd and again as genuine believers let us follow him let us follow our good shepherd who is leading us to greener pastures mm -hmm.